Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And today I will continue sharing from the book by my guru, His Eminence the 25th Sam Tuku Rinpoche. And this is the book that I'll be sharing from, The Living Buddha Within, Sam Rinpoche. I'll be reading from Chapter 5, Avoiding the Ten Non-Virtuous Acts. Let me share a Buddha picture with you. A very nice painting of Buddha. So while I'm reading, you can look at that. And I'll be reading from page 60. All good karma, all good actions, all positive actions are based on the avoidance of 10 non-virtuous acts, which are killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, lying, divisive speech, hurtful speech, idle gossip, covetousness, malice, and holding wrong views. All suffering can be destroyed on the basis of just those 10, non, uh, sorry, 10 avoidances. How simple and wonderful. How easy to learn, especially when Buddha had given us the method to put a stop to our sufferings. By avoiding these, those 10 non-virtues, the mind becomes calmer. Negativities do not accrue anymore, and what has been accrued becomes purified. Eight beneficial qualities to attain higher states of existence. One, to refrain from killing and by helping others out of trouble, such as being a doctor or a nurse, is the cause of a long life. If we have a long life, this enables us to attain our goal and to help others. We need a long life in order to take advantage of the fully endowed human form, and so it is important to take good care of our body. 2. Having patience and carrying out acts such as painting religious pictures, repairing religious temples, statues, and so forth, will enable us to have the karma to have a pleasing physical appearance. People are immediately attracted to those whose appearance is pleasing. Thus, someone attractive is in a better position to offer help to others. 3. Developing humility, overcoming our pride and respecting our elders and other people in general will result in rebirth within a race or caste that is highly regarded by society. People will listen to those who are well respected while they might ignore a low caste person, even if such a person is very wise in general. 4. The act of making offerings and charity will result in wealth. This can be used to help others such as people who require food and clothing before they can learn and practice the Dharma. 5. Restraining from the four non-virtuous acts of speech, lying, divisive speech, harsh talk and idle speech will give you the karma in your future and now to always be truthful. Therefore, this increases our effectiveness in speech while guiding others. When we speak, people will be pleasant and people will listen. People will respect us and they will like hearing our voice. In general, we will gain a very pleasant life and a clear, strong voice that is pleasant and melodious to hear when we restrain from non-virtuous acts of speech. We will have a beautiful voice, a pleasant voice, and a voice that reaches others, that touches others, that can change others, that can guide others, a voice that is respected by others. This is the type of speech that we will get, like His Holiness the Dalai Lama, whose voice, regardless of the words, even the tone of the voice brings tears because it is so beautiful. Or like some singers who, when you just hear their voice, it brings pleasure. It is the result of refraining from the four unwholesome acts of speech. 6. Combining humility with the use of one's power to the fullest extent for the benefit of others. Prayers to the Triple Gems for the attainment of a fully endowed body with the eight qualities in the next life will also be the cause for power and fame. Combining humility will produce the direct result of gaining power and fame in your future life. 
And even now, in fact, a person with these attributes has a greater influence over others and thus can effectively bring about changes for their benefit. For example, a king can cause monasteries and stupas to be built. 7. By helping the poor and the weak and doing for them what they are unable to do, not hitting any living beings, not even one's pet animal, is the further cause of having a capable mind and body. Helping the poor and the weak, the sick, the disabled and not hitting others, not abusing others' bodies, will result in a healthy body and mind, in a future life and in this life also. If such a person can follow the instructions of their guru and by attempting and achieving goals for which others will not strive, they will attain enlightenment in one lifetime. 8. Rejoicing in the Triple Gem Having reverence for others and reciting the Manjushri Mantra will result in very strong willpower. Willpower that cannot be diverted or pushed off the path or easily manipulated. If we have strong willpower, we will be content while following any practices and we will even have the ability to live in a cave alone if necessary in order to do our practices. If we have strong determination to get a girlfriend, if we have strong willpower to get a good business, then that is not a positive sign. That is in fact a negative sign. It is a sign that it will increase our delusions. When we are afraid of meditation, when we are afraid of seclusion in caves, and when we are afraid of these places, it is a sign that in our previous lives, we did not rejoice in other people's good deeds or in the Triple Gem's good deeds. We did not have reverence for others. If we did not have respect for others, it will result in a lack of strong willpower for the genuine activities that will benefit our present life and future lives that will eventually lead to our enlightenment. Having willpower in the correct sense, we will be content and happy with practices and worldly people. Worldly advice, gossip and talk will not influence our future events. We will, we will be very strong in our determination to practice. Even when our teacher says, go into a cave, go into a retreat for one year, we will say, I will do so. When the teacher says, come to a Dharma talk, go into a retreat, do this meditation and recite this prayer one million times, we will think of every excuse that exists not to do it. It shows lack of willpower in the correct sense of word. But when our teacher says, go get a job, fix yourself up, go get a nice boyfriend before he finishes half the sentence, we are out of the door. That is the wrong type of willpower. That is willpower towards delusion and delusional activities. These eight are not necessarily for the attainment of enlightenment. But they do, they do make progress faster and our actions more effective. Having them is like travelling from point A to B in a go-kart or an automobile. These eight results are not the aim of practice by the avoidance of the non-virtuous acts. Four of speech, three of mind, three of body. You can accumulate the karma to attain these eight positions. A long life, a pleasant physical appearance, birth in a high society, high race, wealth, to be truthful, powerful, famous, and to have a healthy, able body with strong willpower. This will help you and bring you and others to the Dharma. Those conditions are not what you want out of Dharma practice, but they will be byproducts of our Dharma practice. They will come without our asking for it. Therefore, you do not have to create or dedicate your merits towards achieving long life, wealth, health, fame, beauty or position. You do not. Instead, you dedicate it for enlightenment. And those eight qualities will naturally, like a lake in the summer monsoon rains that swells up naturally without expectations. Therefore, it is always very beneficial to have excellent motivation to dedicate it to the supreme of the supreme, enlightenment. 
on the basis of the avoidance of the 10 non-virtuous activities coupled with the four opponent powers. This is called Dharma practice. Without that, the initiations, the mantras, the meditation, everything is useless. So, if your Dharma practice consists only of having a beautiful altar or giving gifts to the Sangha, you will get some benefits by the power of the three jewels, but the benefits will not be ultimate and lasting like enlightenment. There will be some sort of benefit like wealth, fleeting wealth, a fleeting happy state of mind, because the object you have done these actions in relations to has the power to grant that condition. So, in order to take full benefit of the eight qualities that one can attain from virtuous karma, one should pray that they could benefit all creatures. That is the motivation. And with that, I will end my sharing session for now. And thank you for sharing your time with me. I will end this session with the completion dedication in Tibetan. Jang Gewa <laughs> Jesu Lama Kusen Rapting Ching, Nam Katrini Chochu Ke Padang, Lossam Tempe Drom Miss of Songi, Troy Musa Tato Ni Gyushi, Gangwe Rawe Kowe Shingam Den, Pendan Deo Malu Gyowe Ni, Charen Se Wan Ten Sing Get Songi, Shape Shire Padu Den Gyushi, Hom Tompe Ngotru Malu Pa, Dene Dala Sao Du So, Kodan Den Palung Chot Nam, Ke Pa So Shik Shuk Ten Sao. Thank you again and hope that you join me for the next sharing.